Hey everybody, how's it going? It's John from Hascast here. Uh, you may have noticed by now that I'm no good at pre-planned videos. So this one isn't pre-planned, it's off the cuff. Uh, last night I posted a review on the Hascast's site of a uh, UK only in-wall socket, smart socket from uh, a company called BG, British General it stands for. Uh, now then, it's a very good socket. I've used it for a few months now. Now, shortly after I posted the review, there was a tweet from Ed Thompson. Um, as you can see, uh, looks good. Did you see if there was any ways to potentially flash in of a third party uh, firmware such as ESP Home or uh, Tasmota, I'm assuming? Uh, that's if they're based on the ESP chip, of course. and so I started doing some, uh, some, doing some digging, and they are in fact not on the ESP chip. They are in fact a Broadlink chip. Now that's not really an issue because I've discovered this Broadlink MQTT. Uh, now this has recently been altered to include the uh, the BGE smart socket, and what this will do is this will allow you to control the uh, the BG smart socket uh, just with MQTT. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, take you through how to set this up. As you can see from my installation of Home Assistant, uh, I did have two monitors here, a switch.monitor and a switch.monitor underscore Samsung. Uh, and these are uh, respectively the left and right sockets of my BG smart socket. So I've removed those, I've left them in the front end, but I've removed those. They used to be here, admittedly, I've just moved them there, but Let us start at the beginning. So, we'll follow the Broadlink uh, MQTT instructions. So, installation. Uh, clone this repo, which is easy to do. Copy that to move across here. Uh, so, I am now SSH'd into my server. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone the repo and uh, now uh, let's cd into that let's have a look at it uh, now in this you have in this directory you have two uh, configuration files you have let's have a look mqtt.conf which Uh, contains all the configuration and you have basically an override file which is the custom one at the minute it's empty what we're going to do is we're going to uh, basically just copy this file over to this file and uh, we're going to change the values that we need to change uh, we also need to install the requirements now I do know that for myself I need to uh, do that with elevated privileges be careful doing this if you don't know what libraries now be careful doing it with elevated privileges if you aren't sure what libraries they are or you haven't looked at the code or anything like that Next on to the configuration. Uh, as it says, all the configurations are in mqtt.conf. Uh, they are overridden by the custom.conf. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use these ones. That way, they're not going to get overridden if, for instance, we update the Git repository from the remote server uh, and it accidentally gets overwritten. <coughs> Uh, now, like I said, this has been recently added. 
and it isn't actually in the code for Python Broadlink yet. So what we need to do is we actually need to reference this pull request. Now, if we go into here, which is a, a different, this is an issue in Broadlink MQTT. It actually tells us how to do it. So we need to reference that pull request. Let's copy that, take it back across. However, you will find that it has already been uh, pulled in as part of the requirements. So what we're going to do is uh, pip uninstall broadlink. And then we're going to install it ourselves. And I'm going to uh, disable the, the cache or the cache, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, so that it pulls it in fresh. Right, oops, and I haven't run it with elevator privileges. Right, so now that should recognize the, the smart socket. Uh, so like I said, what I'm going to do with the configuration files is I'm basically going to copy uh, mqtt.conf over to the custom one. And I'm going to edit that one. Now, if you've just got the uh, the BG Smart Socket, then you would uh, change lookup to BG One, as you can see here. This one. So that's what we're going to do. If you happen to have a a Broadlink RM Pro or one of the other one or more of the other Broadlink devices, then you can use a multiple lookup. Uh, this is the one that I'll use myself after this video. Right, so for the time being, I've just changed it to BG1. Now you also need to make sure that device host and device Mac are set. Substitute uh, 1.50 for 0 0.24, which is my MAC address, uh, which is my IP address. Uncomment that and 0 1. Right, so we need to change that. Now, how you get your IP address and your MAC address is if you go into the BG app, uh, then click on the switch that you would like to find the information for. Uh, burger menu. Use the burger menu, top right hand corner, click on general, and then you'll see an option for device information. That gives you a whole wealth of information. A couple of those are Mac and IP. All right, so I need to uh, change inside that. Next, I need to fill in my MQTT details. Uh, now it's a, a local server. I've actually got a uh, has IO plugin, the MQTT broker. So I'm just going to scroll down and get my username and password. Okay, that's changed. All right, let's try that. Now, hopefully, uh, this should come up with a broad, uh, broad link. There it is. Now, in the broad link, we've got state. Right, now, if I manually turn off, now if I manually turn off the right hand socket of the two, and you'll see within 10 seconds that power two uh, turns to zero. There it is. And if I turn it back on, you'll see that 
power 2 turns back to 1. Like so. Now I can also so broad link if I'm correct uh, then broad link power uh, PWR2 and it's a raw value of off because it's already on I should turn it off no it didn't just give me a second that's it right so it's just the number that's it broadlink power two yeah uh, now you want to obviously hear it in fact you might have heard it you may have heard the the click there if I turn it back on listen for the click and listen for the click again and there we go and this ah, see. there we go and this changes there that's the that's the one that was there by accident right so you can also control the uh, the you can also control the uh, let's have a look with my post 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 that one you can also control the brightness of the LEDs around the button uh, you can control the maximum working time so as I've explained so as I explained in uh, in this post uh, basically if for example you turn your lights off at midday on uh, turn your Christmas lights on at midday uh, set your maximum working time for eight hours then at 8 p.m. it will turn them off uh, now you've got power and maximum working time uh, basically the one without the number on the end will control both uh, and you can obviously set them both individually right so we've done that bit uh, now let us get to work on creating the switches in home assistant and now admittedly I'm just going to cheat I'm going to move these back here <laughs> now if you select now if you select uh, multiple lookup as your device type when you're editing your configuration file uh, then you will end up with a, a serial number like this for your socket which is based in part on your mac address uh, that says that uh, when you have multiple sockets you can use all of them now as you can see uh, it's a switch platform MQTT if I'm giving it a name now the state topic let me get my MQTT software up uh, now the state topic is this one there it is and that will read it from there the command topic is the one that I typed in manually there and in fact so I'm going to have to get rid of these uh, broadlink state yeah that's right and broadlink power okay so the command one is uh, the one that I used here uh, the payloads are different the payload is on and off that's the one that we send uh, to control it and the state is the one that they use to tell us what it's like um, Retain I've turned to true, uh, so that hopefully it will uh, retain the state in case of uh, when it's turned off, that sort of thing. Right, so that is that. Let's go there. Let's go down to settings. Minimize that. 
I do a quick configuration check. And that's okay. All right, so let's restart the server. I am sure, thank you very much for asking. Okay, and there are the monitors. There we go. Let's try the monitor. Hey, that's on. Now it's turned off there because it's not reflected yet in this. There we go. Now, if you lowered the uh, the poll time in the configuration file, uh, then that would happen a lot faster. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn it off uh, manually through the app on my phone uh, and you'll see that it picks it up within 10 seconds and it's reflected uh, in Home Assistant. Here we go. Alright, so that's turned off on the phone. You heard the click uh, within 10 seconds. That will be pulled. Yep, there it goes. Right, so uh, that is basically this video done. Uh, I think most of my videos in the future will be like this. Uh, some off the cuff, but with hardly any production standards whatsoever. Uh, you may see me in the webcam, you may not. Uh, it was the it was the setting up and tearing down of everything before and all the producing the videos and things like that that really got me down. This is not too bad, it's done within an hour. Uh, I need the toilet, so I'm going. Thank you very much and goodbye.